In this video, I will be determining the half-life for protactinium-234. I've got a bottle inside here, which has got some uranium salts, which are dissolved in a solvent. And one of the products of that decay series from, that, from those uranium salts is the protactinium-234, which I will be considering for this experiment. This is my GM tube. So I'll be measuring the ionization events of that. And the GM tube is connected to this data logger here. So we'll be getting live data in 10 second counts. So every 10 seconds, it will give us the counts per 10 seconds and it will be logging it for us. That will then be saved as a CSV file so that I can import that into a spreadsheet. And then I can analyze it there. So in the first part of the video, I'll actually just be collecting the data. I need to do that in two phases. The first is to collect the background count. So if I open up this bottle now, you see that within here, this is the actual protactinium generator. So this has uh, an organic solvent in there, which has got the uranium salts dissolved into it. So I place that onto this collar here and I can place that under the, the GM tube here. So I need to measure the background count that's just coming from the uranium salts dissolved in that solvent without me then separating the protactinium, which we will go, the procedure for that will go through in a moment. So I'm gonna collect, start collecting that data. I'm gonna collect a minute's worth of data. So on my data logger now, I'll, I'll start it recording. So try again. There we go. Okay, so that's now collecting the data and this will be our background count. So I'm gonna, like I said, measure for a minute and then when I actually put that into the spreadsheet, I will work out the average of the 10 second counts and deduct those background counts from the, the data I collect from the protactinium. So you can see that the bottle is inverted, the GM tube right up against the bottle here and the ionization coming out there is what, what I'm counting. <clears throat> the second stage will be to, I will shake the, the solvent, so the bottle of solvent, I'll shake that up. And then uh, when I've sh shaken it for about 15 seconds, I'll place it back here and allow it to settle. And the, the solvent, the, uh, the protactinium will dissolve into one of the solvents in there and float to the top. So we'll get a layer of solvent with protactinium forming at the top so that when we're taking the reading like this, we will get a reading that is predominantly the protactinium. But obviously we still need to deduct the background count from that. Okay, we've got nearly a minute and a half's worth of data there. So I'll stop that and I will save that in a moment. Okay, so th that can continue reading at the moment, that's fine, whilst I get everything else set up. So, I need to now save this file. Oops, not that. So, I've got a memory stick so I can transfer it to my laptop. And let's save that as background. Okay. <clears throat> now this, uh, the, the readings from the protactinium should be good for about five minutes. So I'll collect five minutes worth of data for the actual um, protactinium. And I'll need a new file for that. So go to file new on my Data logger here. So I'm not saving that because I've got the CSV file already. I'll need to set that set, set that up to have the right scale. So I will shake this up to get the protactinium dissolved into that solvent. I will show a side view of the generator so that you can see the two layers forming. Hopefully, I'm not sure how well the camera will pick that up. Okay, so this is a side view of the protactinium generator and you can see the two layers of solvent. We have that bottom layer there, the lighter colour. 
you can see the, the lower lighter solvent there which is the lighter in color but heavier obviously and this lighter solvent here so the protactinium will dissolve into this when i give the bottle a shake and then i'll uh, invert the bottle again allow it to settle so that this solvent will float to the top again presenting a higher concentration of the protactinium to the gm tube here so we will be get that's how we'll be getting readings that are predominantly the gm uh, the protactinium as opposed to the other radioactive isotopes inside this is why also because there are other radioactive isotopes in the bottle we need to, to it's very important to take the background reading with the bottle present okay so we're nearly ready to go now I need to put my safety glasses on because i'll be shaking this radioactive liquid in this bottle okay so I need to shake this sufficiently to get that protactinium dissolved into that solvent. Okay, that should be sufficient now. So if I place that under the GM tube, you'll notice the count has started to increase already. So it's going to be start increasing, oh, if I start this recording, it's going to, at the beginning, give us an increasing reading, and then it will start, that's because more of the protactinium is floating to the top and being presented to the GM tube, but then it will start to decrease due to the protactinium decaying. That's what we're looking for. So it, you can see the the data logger is now collecting much higher counts than it was for the background count. So as I said, I'm going to leave this for about five minutes to collect enough data, which I'll use in my spreadsheet. Okay, we're at five minutes there, so that's that should be enough data to analyze so i'm going to stop that collection now now you can see that the data logger has joined up those data plots but uh, when i've exported this as a cs3 we'll get separate data plots in the spreadsheet so i'll save this as a csv file also Call that one data four. Okay. Now I'll put this generator back into its safety bottle. Right, so the next stage is to analyze that on the spreadsheet. So I'll switch views over to my spreadsheet and start analyzing that data.